Disclaimer! The following episode contains spoilers for Venom. Don't go crying to your mum if we spoil it for you. You've been warned. Welcome to Pod Capers, the official podcast of a place to hang your cape. And this week, I can't believe it, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a very special guest on today. Please give it up for the psychotic symbiote, Venom! I'm glad you finally agreed to bring me on the show, Scott. Because if you hadn't, you'd be an armless, legless, faceless thing rolling down the street like a turd in the wind. Oh, I'm sick of thought, maybe we should just get Mark instead. Give me the music! Hello there, Capers, and as I said, welcome to Pod Capers, the official podcast of a place to hang your cape. My name is Scott James Merriju, and this is a show where we talk about various geek and nerd related topics, and are joined each week by a very special different guest. You know my guest by now, you know him, you love him, he's my friend, my compatriot, my man at arms. Give it up for Mark Russell! I don't, I don't know who that guy was leaving the studio, but it looked awful like Venom. Yeah, kind of like... Big and hulking and black, and oddly enough, no white spider symbol on his uh, chest and back. That was a uh, that was weird. Must have been the ultimate edition. Yeah, probably. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Venom. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. Capers. No one expected this movie to be good. Unless you're delusional. Unless you're delusional, or you know, a studio executive at Sony. Yes, if your name is Abby Arrowed, Matt Tolmash, or Amy Pascal. Is it Amy Pascal? Sorry, Amy Pascal. Pascal. Don't you know French? Not really. <laughs> no, me neither. But the po- point is, yeah, they. this is supposed to be the beginning of the Sony Marvel Universe. Oh, goody. Featuring, featuring all the characters that Marvel hasn't quite been able to get yet and or doesn't really care about as much. And, um, I'll be honest, it's not off to the best start. I've seen worse starts, but I have seen much better starts. And, uh, I mean, poor Venom really doesn't get, a, hasn't had a lot of great experience in the movie-verse, has he not? He got this... Which is a significant improvement over his last iteration, but still, the last iteration was, you know, him being Topher Grace and just being there for like five minutes. Ooh, my spidey sense is tingling, if you know what I'm talking about. Yes, we do know, because we know that you know that Spider-Man is Spider-Man. Yeah, but this was supposed to be the fresh star for Venom, bringing him back to his cool, gory... psychopathic ways and uh is the thing um i think it partially succeeded and partially failed my i'm just going to state my opinion of this movie straight off the bat you know we'll get into the nitty gritty later on but i think this movie is better than we thought it would be but, you know, not as, nowhere near as good as some people, especially people at Sony, hoped it would be. It, this is not a good movie, but, you know, sometimes in amidst a clod of earth, you occasionally find little nuggets of gold, possibly. Just like tiny little specks or something. I actually said, actually, you know what? That wasn't too bad. Because, I don't know about you, Mark, this movie felt, it really did feel... Like, they put in a lot of effort into it. The problem is, effort needs to go hand in hand with talent and knowing what the fuck you're doing. You know, you can try as hard as you like, but if you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna end up with a big old symbiote-coloured mess. And that's what this movie is. A big old symbiote-coloured mess made out of love. I wouldn't say it's made out of love, it's made to make a cheap cash grab. Okay, fair enough. Okay, this the studio exec it's made out of a cheap c- cash grab. For the people actually, you know, boots on the ground making the movie, it seems like... I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm still not quite over the utter train wreck that was Fan 4 Stick, which is, of well, course, it, it, the measurement that all bad superhero movies are measured against. Well, the film's better than Fan 4 Stick. I dreaded that it would be like it, but frankly, it was had some... Minor good parts. Yeah, similar in terms of cinematography. No one seems to remember to turn on a light in this movie. No. 
Well, apart from that, the fight scene in the middle where it had flashing lights and that hurt my eyes. Yeah, uh, I mean, okay, yeah. It, uh, but there's so there's so much to unpack here. I was worried that my biggest concern was this was being worried that it was just kind of be boring and not worth talking about. There is some stuff w worth talking about, both good and bad. There's lots of little things and lots of big things, and I think, Mark, we should just dive right into it, shouldn't we? Well, we should probably get out of the way first if anyone wants to go see this. Spider Man is not in it. Yeah, I do. well, you say we that, you say that. I know, I know, I know. We'll get to that later, dear sweet lord, we'll get to that later. So the movie starts, you know, as all good movies do, in space! And, well, it's, it's say in space, it really doesn't last long in space. Like, there's a spaceship out in space, like, a, a well, no, not a spaceship, a space shuttle i guess from earth and um bl belonging to the life foundation who i was supposed to see in this movie because i remember the life foundation from the spider-man comics yeah they're like a uh, was it a, they what they basically exist to protect themselves from the end of the world they're basically a hyper advanced survivalist organization in the comics from, they basically I wonder, if bear grills I wonder if bear grills found them no you know no 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 bear grills is, they're not like bear grills they're more like those people that build bunkers because they think the zombie apocalypse is going to happen they genuinely mm. believe the end of the world is nigh and they're basically taking steps to insulate themselves and all of their richest benefactors from that thing often in times more be more than willing to speed the apocalypse along if necessary but that's not what they are in this movie. This movie, they're just, you know, your average space travel slash robotics slash bioengineering scientific firm. You know, those kind of companies. By no means are evil. Well, well that, oh God, we're going to get to that. Uh, but basically, I've got some things to say about that. Uh, basically, the spaceship, I don't know what it is, crashes in uh, Malaysia, bringing back with it uh, several dead astronauts, one of whom is the son of J. Jonah Jameson. It's John Jameson. So what's going on there, then? Basically, I mean, I don't know. I thought, oh, maybe this is gonna he's going to turn up later and be one of the symbiotes. Nope. Oh, maybe he's going to be like a man wolf or something. Nope. Although I wouldn't put it past Sony. No, no I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Can we, can we actually, I'd like to talk about this this confusing whether or not back and forth is it going to is it part of the mcu is it not going to be part of the mcu it's like nope now it's like we're making our own thing with jiggy because that went so well last time yeah and, and now they're throwing jameson in like what so what does that mean J. jenna jameson's going to pop up before in a spin-off rather than the spider-man series we demand jk simmons Okay, first of all, I think uh, J. Jonah Jameson has been cast in Spider-Man Far From Home, or he's an upcoming Spider-Man thing. It better be J.K. Simmons, otherwise we riot. It was not J.K. Simmons. I can't remember the actor's name. I honestly can't remember anything he's actually been in. To Wikipedia. To Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Na 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 Wikipedia. Not listed. Not listed. Damn it, I'm... Uh, I I can see the actor's face in my mind brain, Please. but I cannot. <laughs> well, James is not listed on here. Uh, Certainly hasn't been cast yet. I swear I saw something they had been cast. Oh God, fake news! I've been conned. <laughs> you got Rick rolled. Anyway, um, so I think basically it's not this anything made by Sony is not part of the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's just not. Uh, I guess we could view this the same way as DC with their CW Arrowverse and the mm -hmm. DCEU, yeah, I yeah. guess. With I one, guess. Again, with one clearly being much better than the other. <laughs> <laughs> TV. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's... I mean, it really is pathetic because, I, going back to this thing they made out of love, you know the people at Sony don't give a shit about the actual characters of the world or the lore or Marvel. They just want a IP that people recognize, a brand recognition. 
so that they can make as much money can and have their own franchise. That's all they just they because they are desperate. So they've been desperate for a long time to hold on to any sort of franchise or create their own franchise. And they could do this with original characters or get a brand new IP and restart a brand that maybe no one else has touched before. Maybe related to superheroes, maybe not. Who knows? There's a million, million and twelve different things they could have done, but they chose instead to be like Smaug the dragon with his gold and greedily clutch onto the last few remaining uh, IPs they have, which apparently is uh, Venom. Who apparently, uh, nine apparently have nine hundred characters they have access to in the Spider-Man franchise. Nine hundred characters. Wow, that because I mean some of those characters will be very choice. Other characters will be uh, not so choice. I mean, are, are, are we to expect perhaps a a, a Gibbon spin-off? A Warriors spin-off? A Big Wheel spin-off? A Rocket Racer? Ooh, ooh! A Hypno Hustler song! Who the hell's Hypno Hustler? Oh, you need... To, well, that's going far back. It was the 70s, you know. Okay. <laughs> well, what, they're doing a Morbius movie. I still don't know what's going on with Black Cat and Silver Sable. Craven's getting one. There's another character I've never heard of that's getting a movie. But here's the thing, here's the thing. I'm sure some of these characters, if you worked really hard on it, could be uh, ind made independent from Spider-Man and not related to the Spider-Man mythos. And Venom, I think, personally, is one of those things. Yes, it started off being very closely connected to Spider-Man, but as the years went on, especially in recent times of Agent Venom and Anti-Venom and all these other things, I don't know. There's, 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 you, can, you can take Venom out of the Spider-Man circle, almost, and have him be his own thing. But Craven. Black Cat, Silver Sable, even if you could dis uh, divorce them from Spider-Man, would we really care about them that much? Really? Really? Uh, I don't care about Silver Sable outside of Spider-Man. Love her when she's with Spider-Man because they have a like, the very interesting relationship. Same with Black Cat, same with Craven. But I don't care about them outside of that. It's like making a spin-off with... Uh, uh, C-3PO and R2-D2. Yeah, okay, sure, maybe. They've got an interesting buddy act going on, but honestly, they're best suited. The way these characters work, they are a perfect environment, is with all these other characters. And when you take them away out of them for too long, it just doesn't really work. And they Sony don't care, because they will make it work. They are the kid with the square cube trying to ram it into the round hole. It, 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 Sony, stop! It doesn't work. Go home, Sony. You're drunk. <laughs> well, well, me being me, I said what I wrote down like a bunch of ideas. What could happen if they actually did this new universe right? So I threw a whole. I like listed a whole bunch of films, wrote out like a paragraph for each one. I say I came up with some pretty good ideas, and which Sony will be able to come up with. Well, you know, what? I would like to hear these ideas. What now or afterwards? No, now! Yeah, 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 let's wait till after the podcast to hear your interesting ideas about how this film franchise that we're talking about could work. That seems like a smart move. I'll keep it brief. Um, Venom was first. I basically did... I did uh, Agent Venom, but replaced uh, uh, Flash Thompson with Eddie. Makes sense. So, um, and also I'd set up Carnage and stuff like that. The Rocks and... Uh, Ca company would be the main bad guys that are in cloak and dagger yeah uh then i do a crime i could i do a kind of like a dirty dozen tribute with silver sable and black cat where they try to break into tombstone's uh vault in order to steal some uh precious artifacts okay i can understand why black cat would break in but why would silver sable break in she's a mercenary slash security consultant Oh yeah, she was. Oh yeah, I had uh, Silver si Silver Silver be hired by Roxon in order to shut down Tombstone because he's threatening their organization. Oh, I, I see. Okay. okay, so someone sorry. working within the law to shut down Roxon, someone working without the law to shut down. Yeah, Roxon. and then I had um, Morbius, which is a straight up uh, vampire science gone wrong horror film. They, yeah, and the uh, then the Prowler. Uh, the original Prowler, not the uh, Miles Morales uncle. Oh right. And and that would cut. Uh, for some reason, I said, I know. Let's let's have him steal the G formula, which would eventually create the Green Goblin. That was a bit of a weird idea. I don't know why I did that. Hey, you're thinking outside the box. I just, I appreciate it. Interconnectedness and yeah. all that. Thing. Then I did Rocket Racer. That was. <laughs> it, then why? I, 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 why? I, 
<laughs> well, it doesn't help him in the big wheel, the bad guy. I think Rocco has some interesting. He's got he's got an interesting background. It just needed to be reworked a bit, similar to like Luke Cage. You know what? If they if they can make uh, Guardians of the Galaxy work, they can make Rocco Racer yeah. work. Uh, then I did a silver silver and uh, silver and black cat uh, crossover again, which where Chameleon is the main bad guy. Uh, then I did the, the the Avengers level thing would be the Outlaws, which would be Silver Sable, Black Cat, Prowler, Rocket Racer, and uh, the Puma all teaming up to stop Roxon from doing bad things. Now you see, I mean, it's familiar ground, but it could potentially work. But the problem is, okay, here's the thing, here's the thing. There are no such. There is no such thing as a bad idea. Only poor execution. You could yeah. give the weirdest out of their ID, uh, the, the idea rather, and put it in mm. the hands of the right person and create gold. And you... I did. I did a phase two and a phase three as well. Oh my god! <laughs> I really planned this out. I got, yeah, you clearly I got... put a lot more thought into it than either Sony or the DCEU. Yeah, I, I, I'm afraid I had to cheat and put Spider Woman in Phase Two because was like we had to put Sp a Spider character in there somewhere. Which one? Spider uh, Jessica Drew. Okay. Well, you, well, know. you know what? We need more female superhero-led <laughs> uh, superhero movies. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait for Captain Marvel. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, because and. We're in a similar situation now to the Universal Monsters franchise, the well, the second Universal, the Dark Universe franchise, Ugh. which is, uh, yeah, which is garbage. Yeah, garbage. It's a terrible first start. Well, really sets well, the. It's more mummified than the mummy. Yeah, because a terrible first start sets the tone for the franchise going forward, and if they're not careful. It's really not going to mean a franchise. Will we get more uh, Venom movies? Will we not? Do people even care that much? I don't well, know. They should care because the Universal Monsters are like the... They're the original horror film icons. Yeah, I'm talking about Sony, not Universal Monsters. Oh, sorry, okay. Obviously, they should care about Universal Monsters, but the problem is... Well, well, well we, 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 so we could be here all day talking about the Universal Monsters problems. Yeah, Sony don't care, so why should we? Well, that, that is a very good point, but I want to care. You know what? If Sony... Yeah. Would I prefer Venom and all these other characters to be part of the MCU and right in their rightful hands of Marvel? Yes. yes would I Would I also be contented with the fact that Sony were making these movies by themselves, but they were good? Yes, because I've always said it doesn't matter who it is, Marvel, DC, Sony, I don't care, as long as you make good stuff. I would love it if DC made great stuff, but they don't. I would love it if Marvel made good stuff, and they do. I would love it if Sony made good stuff, and they don't. Aye. And so, yeah, now we're just in this kind of shitty scenario, really, where it's just greedy corporations holding on to characters that they have proven time and time again that they don't. Like, this is not the scenario we had with Amazing Spider-Man 1 coming out, because a lot of people, including myself, are saying, it's too soon for a reboot, I prefer Raimi's version, I, this isn't going to work, and, uh, or maybe even part, be part of the MCU, and but they were like, no, 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 we're going to do this, and we were all like, well, okay, because it might turn out great, it might be a fresh new start for the character, because we didn't know, we didn't know how monumentally atrocious, atrocious it would be. <laughs> and uh, then two movies later... They kill themselves. Basically, yeah. They kill themselves like they killed Gwen Stacy. Who wants to see an Aunt Nay movie? Well, that was in the cards? Yeah, they, it was going to be Sinister Six. They were going to do an Aunt May prequel where she was a spy. <laughs> That's real. It was real. That is not. Cards. That is not the bottom of the barrel. That is going through the bottom of the barrel, through <laughs> the floor of whatever surface the barrel is resting on, down past the foundation of the house, through the Earth's upper crust, down into the Earth's primordial liquid molten metal centre. And then blows up the Earth. <laughs> Possibly, yeah, because, uh, oh my god, no. You know what this reminds me? Remember oh. a Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2, the video game? Uh, There's from, a video game yeah. called Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2. You play a lot of Marvel characters, it's a lot of fun. I've got my own issues with that, actually. But, uh, 
um, in the lead in the lead up to the game being released, uh, on April Fool's Day, on April Fool's Day, one of the developers released a video saying about how they were planning to have Aunt May as a playable character who beat people up with a walking cane. <laughs> would actually be quite funny. <laughs> that would be funny, but again, April Fool's Day, it was a joke because mm. they knew the idea of having Aunt May be a playable character, a kind of real major single player focus on Aunt May in any capacity would be ridiculous and stupid. Exactly. And you know what? They were right. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that basing a solo project on Aunt May is a fucking stupid idea. Don't believe me? Look at that comic they did way back when which featured a young Aunt May and a young Ben Parker and a young Richard and Mary Parker where they were all having sex with each other. And that was universally decried as fucking weird and stupid. Well, thanks very much. I'm Scarborough. You, you didn't even read it. And I, I, think of the people who read it. I fucking read it. Oh, God. It's awful. It's fucking awful. And, oh, my God. I, I mean, there's desperate. And there's fucking... De if you're this desperate for ideas, Sony, if you're this desperate for anything, anything to build a franchise on, you probably should just say, fuck it, and create your own original characters. Thank you. Thank and, you very much. And they would never do that because of brand yeah. recognition. Because yeah. heaven forfend anyone go to see a movie featuring characters that they aren't already familiar with. For fuck's sake. <laughs> it's... Uh, oh, hi, Pixar. I didn't see you there. Yeah. Fucking yeah. And uh, It's... Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, just, I'm just so tired of this i'm so tired i would be fine with this if i thought they were genuinely trying their best if this was just a making the best of a bad situation but really they're just they're clinging to things that should be let go they are indiana jones struggling to reach the the, the holy grail of the cross the chasm and i'm i'm fucking his dad uh sean connery <laughs> holding on to saying saying sony sony let it go let it go, Sonny. <laughs> you st uh, so who, who's Elsa then? <laughs> I was just thinking about who is Elsa. Uh, DC. Uh, DC. DC. Yeah, yeah. DC. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. I like the Joker movie. The, the Joker movie looks good. <laughs> no one cares at this point. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll be great. No one cares. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix is the only one who cares. I'll go and see when it comes out. I'm sure it'll be great. I, 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 I have long since given up on ever, 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 ever having any hope or excitement for DC. You did that to me, Suicide Squad. You fucking did that to me. But we're talking about a bad Marvel project instead. We're talking about Venom. We were. <laughs> yeah, we, we were. It's... We're off on a tangent again. Oh, God. It's just... It's really, it is really depressing as a huge Marvel fan who's been a fan of Marvel for years. It's like Venom for years. I've been a fan of Venom ever since I played the 2000 uh, Spider-Man game on PC where he's voiced by the same guy who did uh, Cosmo from Fairly Old Parents. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it didn't sound the same as Cosmo, but it was always... Oh, it was, oh, it was so cool. Darren Norris, brilliant. But, oh, very nice. Yeah, but... Uh, and and now to see him reduced to this, this desperate, pathetic attempt for attention, basically to say, no, we've got our own franchise, we can do it, and just 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 give up, Sony. Everything has its time. Everything ends. Your day in the sun in terms of superhero movie franchises is, is over, at least with Marvel. Entered in two thousand seven. Pretty much, yeah. And they two thousand two thousand four. If I want to be even more back. Well, not maybe I don't know, but. The point is, ever since then, they've been dead and they just didn't know it. They're like, like, they're like the Professor Bins from Harry Potter. <laughs> the his teacher in Hogwarts te taught history of magic, died one day, and simply went about his business as usual, despite the fact that he was a ghost. 
And that's what they are. They're just a ghost. A ghost of the former selves. And they're trying to get back to life. But I'm sorry. There's no magical machine from that live action Casper movie around here, Sony. It's not going <laughs> to work. It's not going to work. I couldn't get access to it anyway. It was a Universal film. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, uh... So on that note, uh, the spaceship crashes to Earth. <laughs> Get about J. Jones, like said. <laughs> and uh, one of the, uh, one of the symbiotes uh, attaches onto someone and uh, they start walking away. And here's the thing I don't get. Um, the symbiotes... They behave in different ways with different people, and I'm really not sure about the rules about this. So they bond with, uh, if they bond, find the right person to bond with, and what exactly makes the right person, we still don't know. They achieve true symbiosis, and it's an equal partnership sort of thing, almost. Except the symbiote can sometimes take control, uh. And, but if it's a bad, uh, symbiosis, if the person isn't right, maybe they just, you know don't have a lot of fibre in their diet, who knows, uh, then they, the person dies, but sometimes the symbiote can control them, like hopping from person to person, going throughout Malaysia, and then going into boarding a plane as a little girl, and then going to San Francisco. It's, it, it's, it, you know, it is, it's a similar situation to the Mummy movie. Talk about going back to that for a second. Uh, because the mummy in that movie had so many different powers and affected people in so many different ways. Like, sometimes you would have immortal god powers. Sometimes you would be possessed. Sometimes you would become undead. Sometimes you become actual dead, but appear as a ghost. And it was just so confusing and so bizarre. There's so many different things that can happen. So there was never... I, I'm a big... Again, we don't really know the rules here. What are the fucking rules? We need the rules. Quick, Cosmo, get the rules. I can't do Cosmo. Yay! Bloody crowdy things! Wanda! I can't, I can't do Cosmo either, no one. <laughs> Super toilet. Ah! <laughs> that's the <laughs> only that's thing a... I can remember. It's just another thing. How? Why does it take the... Oh, it was Riot, isn't it, who's in the, who's body hopping? Why does it take him six months to get from Malaysia to America? Yeah. That, that, I mean, that's like a Is week. Slowest, a week? Slowest, that's he was walking all the way to the airport. Two weeks? Don't know. Who knows? I mean, he knows enough. He can obviously, when he inhabits a body, uh, it can uh, take. You know, he understands what's going on in the world around him. That has been established. So why doesn't he just like steal a car? Do, yeah. Do all the people he inhabits not know how to drive cars? Why does he just get a bird? Inhabit a bird or a fish? They they can inhabit animals actually yeah get a fucking bird and fly to San Francisco yeah gee this is you're making things more difficult maybe you just maybe you just wanted to play tourist maybe you just want to like have a holiday in Malaysia after being in space for so long let's go to Malaysia have a lovely holiday for Riot oh God. it's a jolly holiday for Riot. Riot makes your heart so bright and rotted. <laughs> but this this whole th and so many of the astronauts die, and um, this really upsets the CEO of the Life Foundation, Carlton Drake, played by Riz Ahmed. Who uh, I'll be honest, as bad guys go, this movie really cannot choose whether he is a bad a good guy doing bad things for a good cause. Or just a straight up megalomaniacal bad guy. His character is really inconsistent. He jumps over the place. Because what is his motivation, his goal is, he believes the earth is fucked. Okay, completely utterly fucked environmentally. So he wants to send people up into space. However, he thinks the best way of doing that is bonding with the symbiotes. Because that would mean that they could, we could cooperate with the symbiotes and survive in space. The problem is, in order to do that, he is willing to do a lot of bad things. Including basically kidnapping homeless people off the street. Or is he? We don't know if they're kidnapped or he's just like giving them an uh, opportunity she... or offering things. I think they said they had to sign a, uh, uh, a, I can't remember what it said, some sort a, of... A legal uh, waiver. A legal, legal. waiver. Yeah, yeah. one scientist says they're making them sign legal waivers that they don't understand. And first of all, kind of patronising. Second of all, like maybe they do, maybe they don't, we don't know. And second of all, um, 
like, does that mean they're being kidnapped? Or this like, saying, hey, you want some money? We'll just have to do a quick medical experiment. And, like, one is, they're both bad, but one is significantly better than the other. And there's another time where there's a one subject who's not really bonding properly with the symbiote anymore, and they try blasting him with some sonics, which, as we all know, hurt symbiotes. And then he's just, like, he keeps on saying, stop, you're hurting him! But then in the next, a couple of scenes over, he willfully and dispassionately allows the scientist, played by uh, Jenny Slate, spoiler alert, to, yeah. uh, to, to die by bonding with the symbiote. And it's just like, are you a cold, cruel, heartless man who's willing to do anyone and go through anyone to get what you want? Or are you a genuinely philanthropic person who's just lost his way? Mm. And I'm fine with either. I really am. Although I would prefer the sympathetic approach because that's got a bit more layers. But if you, if you have to pick one, you can't do one or the other because that's not being multidimensional and not having layers. That's just being an inconsistent. It's just like, like if Darth Vader crushed that guy's throat in the beginning of episode four. Okay, and now I'm going to go perform as a clown at the children's hospital. Bye! <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, Lord, Vader, come, Lord Vader, come back. What just happened? No, it's too late. I booked. I got my clown nose and everything. I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's annoying. It's annoying because you know Riz Ahmed could do that. He could play the sympathetic person or the megalomaniacal person. And he's just all over the place and not a lot of put thought is put into him. Yeah. One thing I don't understand is why are the symbiotes dying? Because I thought they killed the human bodies. Apparently they die too. Oh, uh, yeah. Because they do the thing with the rabbit. With the yellow one. I'm like, okay, the rabbit is bonded perfectly with the rabbit. And then later on, it shows the symbiote is dead for some reason. Yeah, you didn't keep a close enough eye on it, I think is what said was said to it. You need uh, to water it twice a day. Obviously, and give it plenty of sunlight. Uh, it, again, it's inconsistency. These, I mean, the symbiotes in the comics, as far as I remember, weren't that difficult to figure out. They bonded with people, uh, initially temporarily, but if they really, really liked that person, they could bond permanently and never be removed from them. They gave you all sorts of cool powers. Sometimes if they... Um, bonded with someone who had other separate superpowers they could duplicate them in certain ways they're vulnerable to fire and vulnerable to sonics although in fairness the movie does get this right and mm -hmm. uh that there's really little more to them that i can remember there's been a couple of expanded things obviously with agent venom and uh, symbiote island or whatever it's called symbiote invasion and now i found i finally recently found out their names like the symbiote races names they're called the clintars clintars I think so, yeah. That's like a type of dental tool. Yes. Ask your dentist about Clintar. <laughs> free, symbi free symbiosis with perfect teeth. And, um, so yeah, the Life Foundation up to bad things and poor Jenny Slate scientist has reservations. <gasps> uh, um, but, uh, we don't need to know about that right now because, um... With, there's, a, there's another person we need to talk about. The protagonist du jour, Eddie Brock. Hey, but, but nay. Yay. Yay. Let me be honest. Be honest. Um, Tom Hardy as Eddie Brock, uh, at least with this version of Eddie Brock, the slightly nicer version of Eddie Brock, as opposed to the one he's in the comics, he's probably perfect casting. It seemed to work quite well. It's the best part of the, of the film. The yeah. only good part of the film. Yeah, honestly, if I was to recommend this movie to anyone for any reason, it would be Tom Hardy's performance. Because he does a dual role. He does both Eddie Brock and Venom. And he's great as both of them. If I had to recommend this movie to anyone for any reason, it would be uh, Tom... Because uh, he does very well at uh, two different uh, people, two different characters, playing off each other. And... It really is the best part of the movie, and I don't say that because the other parts of the movie are shit. I say that because even if the other parts of the movie were good, it would still stand out. Tom Hardy is excellent in this role, the roles, I should say, <laughs> and he's brilliant. And honestly, he carries the movie. The whole movie, on his back, like a turd in the wind. God, that line is so stupid. And that comes in at the end of the movie. We'll get onto that. Uh, you know, we're going to get onto that. Oh, God. One, one thing I'd like to... Uh, I, I, it probably wasn't just me, but did you feel like you were watching some sort of gritty remake of The Mask? 
I didn't, but now that you said that I do, oh my god. That is very <laughs> similar. It is a, lot very... People, a lot of people said that um, Tom Hardy is uh, is acting a lot like Jim Carrey from, from The Mask or Liar Liar. I'm like, okay, let's, let's look at this from the thing. It's virtually the same kind of, for, at least for, for Tom Hardy's character, it's basically the same thing Jim Carrey goes through. Down to that guy, doesn't have a girl that he wants to be with, encounters this weird alien magical thing that produces a different persona that's a little bit wacky. Yeah, so the, the, the mask was funnier. The mask was, well, yeah, obviously the mask was funnier. I didn't expect Venom to do a rendition of Cuban Pete. They call me Cuban Pete. I'm the king of the rub the beat. When I play my records, I go ch chicka boo ch chicka boo Oh, God, I'll never get over that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It's a start of Venom's new album. Songs of the Symbi- S- songs Mambo of Symbiosis. Mambo Beats with By Venom. Featuring songs. Eminem. Songs of Symbiosis. <laughs> <laughs> Samba Symbiosis. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, and uh, so, yeah, he's he's really good. And he's got a pretty good life. He's like an investigative reporter uh, working for Bobby Fish from Luke Cage. He's got a great... That was weird. Go- that was weird. That was weird. <laughs> yeah. Is that why he left Luke Cage in the middle of season two for well, this? He said he was going to California. Really, Ron <laughs> Sifus Jones? Really? Really? For this? For this? <laughs> I may have, I may, maybe it's for This Is Us. Who knows? Who knows? Weird. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's got a great girlfriend, played by Michelle Williams, and who is a lawyer working for the Life Foundation. And oh, Eddie... she, said, she technically says that her firm works for the, for the, for the foundation. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, Bobby Fish, I'm not going to call him anything else because I don't even know his character's name. Basically, he tells Eddie Brock, okay, so I know that you know the Life Foundation and get up to a couple of shady stuff in the past, but I need you to do an interview for them because they are actually, you know, sending rockets up and this is important stuff. And he's like, eh, no, they're, no, no, they're bad people. You know it, I know it, even though they have no evidence. I will say I love Tom Hardy's performance, but el- aspects of the Eddie Brock character I find incredibly annoying. Eh, 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 eh. And... Uh, and it's just like, okay, look, I know you don't like this, but you do like a million and one investigative report. You can do one semi puff piece, not even that. Like, Anderson Cooper fucking goes to war zones, but he doesn't do that every day. <laughs> Jeez. And so. With well, his terrible accent, Brooklyn accent. Was it terrible? Well, I don't know, because I'm terrible but at it, accents. It, it, it reminded me of. Um... John, uh, what's his name? John Louis Cazamo's voice as Luigi in the live-action Mario movie. It exa- sounded exactly like it. Like he's doing a wonderful impression of John Louis Cazamo. Leguizamo. Leguizamo. Thank you. Sorry. Because it's the same. Because it, it's the same cliche Brooklyn accent that I've heard so many times. Stereotypes are fun. Ah, uh, yeah, and, um, but then he sees his girlfriend left a laptop open with all this confidential information just right there. And, um, well, obviously we're thinking, well, Eddie would never betray his girlfriend's trust. Oh, no, in fact, his fiance's trust, even, by looking at high confidential information that, uh, if he ever got, if ever got out, that he ever reported on, would lead to her being fired and losing her job. And also would never be really considered proper evidence because of the way it's obtained. But then he goes and sees it. Even though... But, and then he confronts Carlton Drake with this evidence. And what does Carlton Drake do? Well, he does what anyone would do if he's confronted with allegations of people dying under his care. He uh, immediately cuts out the interview, walks away and has security escort Eddie Brock out. And um, then yeah, Eddie Brock gets... and, and, and actually... He doesn't take the physical evidence with him. No, he doesn't. What, what idiot! And also, and also, he, like his Bobby Fish then says, "Okay, right. So you say you have evidence of them doing massive wrongdoing. Okay, well, you know what? I'm going to be reasonable and not fire you on the spot. Uh, what's your source? I don't really have a source, but they're bad people. <laughs> yeah, you're fired. And I'm just here thinking, well, what the fuck did you think was going to happen? You were confronted a very powerful CEO based on unsubstantiated evidence that you then lost, that you stole from your fiance that was confidential. 
This was supposed to be the worst thing you could have ever done. You could have taken the evidence to your boss and said, okay, I'll do the puff piece, but look, real evidence, they're doing bad shit. We need to follow up on this. But no, you just went and... Oh my god, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's like Wolverine and Bernstein didn't immediately go up to do 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 and go up to Richard Nixon and say, hey, you, masturbated the, you masterminded the Watergate scandal, you did. Because guess what? They were fucking smarter than that! <laughs> it's so. I mean, no, yeah, he loses his job, and I don't feel bad about that. I don't feel bad. He's like, oh, no, I feel I bad for Eddie Brock. I don't feel bad about it because. A, he did a stupid thing. B, he did an obviously bad thing. And we kind of find out later that uh, he didn't even apologise to his fiance for it, or ex fiance because she quite rightly, after being fired... Uh, <laughs> dumps him. Dumps him, completely, on the spot. Like, I don't even need to think about this. Here's the ring back. Have a nice life, sucker. <laughs> and then we jump six months in the future, and he's... What he's getting drunk in a bar and the the what's his face is on screen. It's like I hit the guy ruined my life. I'm like, no, you di he didn't. You ruined your own life. Yeah, it's uh, I I get what they're trying to do. I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to recreate what happened in the comics. Eddie Brock uh did a big newspaper expose that uh this serial killer called the Sin Eater that killed Captain Jean DeWolf uh was uh this one guy. When it turns out, actually, he was someone else completely. And Spider-Man exposed that. And because of that, Eddie Brock lost his job and everything. And grew to hate Spider-Man. And that's what... Then he got bonded with Venom and that led to... One thing led to another. And the, I guess they were trying to recreate that. But here's the thing. Um, in the original comics, Eddie Brock was ultimately a victim of circumstance. He had every reason to believe the Sin Eater was the person that everyone else thought he was, but he happened to be wrong, and because of that, he lost. He was an innocent bystander, and a, a, just a, one of those people that just got left by the way. So he, he was very, very unlucky. He didn't actually really do anything very wrong. In this movie, he obviously did something wrong and stupid, and so we can't really feel bad for him. No, we can't. And it's... it's it's like, if you're going to recreate that sort of feeling, actually recreate it. Like, uh, maybe he actually, uh, he goes to his boss with the evidence. The boss says, okay, yeah, we can do this. Okay, let's go with it. And they run through all the evidence. They do a big expose, but then the Life Foundation lawyers come in. And it's more than they thought it would be. And his boss is like, I'm sorry, Eddie. I really thought this was going to work out, but it didn't. I now am legally obligated to fire you. I'm sorry. But I didn't do anything wrong. I know, but yeah, you... I'm gonna fire you, and now your life is in tatters, and no one wants to speak with you or associate you, even though you did nothing wrong. Yes, and that, that would have led that would have led to a perfect when he bonds with Venom. That would have led to a perfect I, reason for him to get revenge or get even with people. Because uh, and uh, now he's just a, a loser, a likable loser, I guess. Because I've got the. Credit where credit is due, Tom Hardy has so charisma pouring out of his ears because there's a homeless person, I think her name's Donna, and uh, they have a little back and forth between her because obviously setting up when she gets uh, involved with the Life Foundation later on, but uh, when she like, takes all the newspapers out of a newspaper receptacle and they haggle for the pri over the price of it and they have a nice little back and forth, and it's just like, oh damn it, Tom Hardy is too charming for this character. Yeah. He's so charismatic, he's got such great chemistry of everyone around him. But the problem is, the character isn't written... It's not written terribly, I guess, but it's not written nearly as good as it needs to be. And he's very nice to Mrs. Chen. And very nice to Mrs. Chen. And while she's getting robbed and he st stays out of the way, and obviously, okay, well, obviously, that's setting up for later. Oh, this movie is so transparent! But he's approached in the in the store by uh, Jenny Slate, who says, OK, so he's been killing people for years accidentally and I've kind of had enough of it. Uh, so and also, does she does she or does she not have like a, a child that was threatened by him? Yeah, she does. She's because cause he very creepily says, how is your kids? And um, they never really get brought up again. And when she dies later on, they, they never get brought they're brought up. So I guess. Kids go to a fucking orphanage, I guess. Yeah, let's have a dad. 
Mm. Oh, McKinney, this is a superhero. This is a cop superhero universe. Their parents are guaranteed. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, everyone is a single fucking parent. No one. <laughs> no god. And um, basically, she says, "Okay, I want you to help me expose him." And uh, quite why she chose to go to Eddie Brock, a disgraced journalist that no one would touch and not, you know, a, a genuine investigative journalist with credentials that works for CNN or the BBC or someone. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> OK, sure. Why not? And so she takes him to, to the uh, Life Foundation to find evidence. And uh, there they find that said homeless person, Donna become one of the subjects and Brock attempts to free her but Donna attacks him and the symbiote transfers from her body to his and she dies even though in the comics she's actually another symbiote hybrid person called Scream I think uh -huh. uh, and uh, Eddie manages to escape but obviously he's starting to display weird symptoms because apparently he's just the right person for the symbiote and then uh, then the voice starts appearing in his head Eddie and this is where the movie starts getting just a little bit better. Yeah, the, the one thing I'd like to point out is, why are there no security cameras? Sorry, could you repeat that? Why are there no security cameras in the Life Foundation? This is a very good point. Why? And he's like, who who escaped? Where's, where's, the, where's the thief? He got away, sir. You're fired. Why, why do you have any security cameras? Uh, 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 you're fired. Uh. Yeah, L like... <laughs> okay, so well, you know why? Like, why? May why maybe, maybe, just off the top of my head, maybe it's because they're experimenting on human beings when they're not supposed to be. Well, they don't want to bust out, are they? They just like, have motion sensors in the in the labs of the symbiotes who are all now apparently dead for some reason. Or maybe like security cameras outside of the lab where all the hey, inhumane well, experiments are taking place. Well, then they should have. Been, someone would have noticed. Um. Um. Eddie and Jenny like going in. They would have said, "That's just oh no, it's a security breach. Sends one in." Yeah, and... It's basic simplicity. It's the worst laboratory in the history of laboratories. Basically. Ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Freddy Fazbear's has better security. Ugh. And, um... And so, Eddie uh, goes home and is really not doing too well. And eventually he finds uh, his ex fiance who's got a new boyfriend, uh, Dr. Dan... Who uh, you think is going to be, oh, he's going to be the jerk guy character. But actually, he's not. He's pretty decent, really? actually. Really nice guy. Very nice guy. I wish he was the main character. Huh? Mm. And uh, examines him and discovers that, oh, yeah, you need to go to the hospital right now. Are you sure? Maybe I should take a dip into this lobster tank and eat raw <laughs> lobster. I mean, it's funny, but... Uh... <laughs> and they discover, oh, God, you have uh, like an actual parasite thing, an actual symbiote thing. And uh, it's pretty disgusting, actually, what it goes through. It gets all sweaty and starts eating, like, food from the garbage because the symbiote needs to feed, which I don't remember from the comics, but still. Aye. Uh, right, right, here's the thing, here's the thing. Um, so the symbiote is then revealed later on to be, like, rotting his internal organs and basically feeding on him, and it needs to offset that by eating people. And my question to that is this... Uh, well, I've got another question about that, the all internal organs thing. But my main thing is this. Um, movie, you do know what the definition of a symbiosis is. It's <laughs> two independent organisms working together in concert for mutual benefit. What you're describing is a parasite. Like, like a tapeworm or something. And that's not what the symbiotes are. If they were, they'd be called parasites. They're not the fucking phalanx or the brood. They're the fucking clintars, the symbiotes. <laughs> Get it right. I mean, if you have... what's Because right now I'm not seeing a difference between uh, the failed reject symbiote hosts and the one that actually work. Because the ones that don't, they, they keep on feeding on the host and then they die. Here, with the actual successful symbiotes... They feed on the hosts, but they get superpowers to benefit them? I, I, maybe there's like a missing ingredient or something, like a magical MacGuffin that stabilized the symbiosis. But that never happens in the movie. That never gets brought up. There's no X factor in terms of making sure it's actual proper symbiosis. Exactly. I mean, this is, this is Venom, not Animorphs. Yeah. These aren't yurks. Yurks. God, that, that show and those books scared me. I never read the books. So the, the show creeped me out. Mm. Or Tobias. Chuck as a bird forever. 
well, well he's fine with it apparently but we're getting oh, yeah. off, we're getting way off subject <laughs> and so um meanwhile again jenny slate uh gets caught by uh carlton drake and leaves her in uh the uh, secure room with a symbiote to see if it'll work and obviously it kills her and he'll and the symbiote too why uh uh, basically, because they've got four symbiotes in this movie, and they need to boil it down to two, then one. Yeah, I don't get that. Because in the in the in Ultimate, they like design. They can cure cancer and stuff, can't they? Yeah, in the Ultimate verse, uh, it, the symbiote suit gets is not an but actually something that was engineered by uh, Eddie yes, Brock and Peter Parker's parents, who were both scientists together. Oh yeah, yes, that's right. And uh, to cure cancer, but obviously it didn't work out very well. No. Uh, our fathers died to create me, and now you will too. See, I can't do the Venom voice. Oh, fuck. How's it go? Oh, damn it, what's the line? Our fathers died to create me, and now you will too. Our fathers died to create me, and now you will die too. Like a turd in the wind. <laughs> God, that's so stupid! It's so stupid! <laughs> anyway. Um, and it seems to me you lived your life like a turd in the wind. <laughs> I've been waiting to do that all day. Well, you you picked the right moment. You really did. Strangers in the night. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Where were we? You didn't do it with me. Sorry. Exchanging glances. Strangers in the night. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, so uh, Jenny Slate dead. Eddie Brock struggling with his uh, new, the voice in his head. Don't open the door. Because like uh, he's attacked by mercenaries to retrieve the symbiote. And uh, guess what, guys? Uh, guys with guns versus magical alien symbiote creature. Not a fair fight. And the symbiote takes over his body, startlingly reminiscent of that other movie that's come out recently where the guy gets a chip in his brain that reprograms his body. Uh, I don't remember that one. Robocop. <laughs> no, it's a it's a more recent movie. I haven't seen it yet, but apparently it's quite good. It's not Robocop. It's better than fucking Robocop. Well, the, uh, the, the new wow. the new Robocop, the new Robocop. Okay, okay, okay. They had the perfect redesign. Oh no. Yeah, we're better than better than We're better than that. We're better than that. Okay. And so they try to take the symbiote, but obviously it doesn't work. And he uh. Jumping out, jumps out a window, jumps another window. Jumps out another window, has a brief conversation with the uh, symbiote for the first time. And I was wondering how long it was going to be before they actually have a conversation, as it were. But, um, and this is weird, actually. In the comics, they don't really have conversations as such. It's more like a melding of two consciousnesses into one single consciousness. But uh, in this one, they go for the dual thing, which works for the movie, in fairness. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, you're the parasite. Parasite! And it's it's pretty interesting. And then they have the uh, the uh, motorbike chase, which uh, uh, Incredibles 2 did it. Better. Better, yeah. And they almost get away from him until they suddenly don't. And suddenly the car rams into Eddie Brock, like breaking all of his bones until the symbiote heals him. And then he transforms into Venom proper for the first time. Now the CGI... It's very much like this movie in that uh, it's not good, but it's not terrible. Well, it's better than uh, Spider-Man 3's Venom, in my opinion. Mm, probably, yeah, but uh, I don't know. I, f I, feel, I keep on feeling like the CGI for Venom could have been better. It could have been so much better, but it also could have been so much worse. They make him very animated and given facial uh, movements in all the right play ways and the lip syncing and the way he moves. It's fine, I guess. Yeah, 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 it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And, do and doing the weird sock puppet thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but here's the, brings me on to one, one of the biggest problems in the movie. It's rated 15. I don't know what that corresponds to in uh, US terms. It's, that's PG-13. PG-13. Oh, so 13 year olds can see this and it's Venom and so wouldn't that be an 18 or something a bit grisly? Because he like, I kept on seeing in Edinburgh there's all these uh, bus posters and stuff for the movie and it's just like, we've got enough superheroes. So like, ooh, he's dark, he's more gritty and he needs to eat people in this movie. I don't know why. And so he 
takes one of the security guard guards that are chasing after him and he bites his fucking head off. Which sounds badass, right? Yes, except they cut away from it. They cut away from it. They don't see it properly. Every, he bites multiple heads off in this movie and we don't really ever get a good look at it. And it's like, if you're going to have a story with a giant monster biting people's heads off, show the fucking biting their heads off. I want to see him rip into this guy's fucking skull, tear it or hit off his shoulders and see blood spurting out of the wound. Like, and this is kind of why he does not like gore. I don't like that sort of stuff, but it's appropriate for this kind of story. And I'm looking at Deadpool. I'm looking at Deadpool one and Deadpool two and all the crazy gory stuff they got up to. And I'm thinking that Deadpool has more balls than fucking. Venom, and in terms of the anti-hero scale, if there's a spectrum, there's the good anti-hero and there's the bad anti-heroes. Venom is on the bad scale and Deadpool is on the good scale. And yet, Deadpool is way more badass and much more gritty and in your face. Well, well from what I understood, because I, I looked it up, apparently, um, uh, from what I understand, I thought it was going to be 18. Didn't, the director said it was going to be 18. I guess along the way, someone said, oh, no, we can't have this be 18. We've got to have kids watch this because it's a Spider-Man thing. We can't do something like that. And you could tell in the in all the editing of the of the fighting sequences that it's just been so hacked to the bone it's, to get rid of all stuff. It's bloodless is what it is. It's and so... I, I, it's bloodless in every single meaning of the word. And Tom Hardy said that about like 40 minutes of the film were cut out. 40 mi- Oh, God. It's... Uh, like, Sony, if you want to do this kind of movie, do this kind of movie! Don't get halfway through doing it, get cold feet and realise you want it to be something completely different, because that doesn't work. It doesn't work. If this was a Spider-Man movie, I would... Like, I never expected ha- Spider-Man Homecoming to be rated 15 or 18. That wouldn't work. And if Venom was in that movie, again, it might not work. But if you're going to go for a Venom solo project, I mean, jeez, jeez. Exactly. I've got cut, and well, considering what they po- they teased in the at the end of the credits, they're gonna have to go up. They, are they, is it still gonna be fifteen in the sequel? I don't. You see, you're assuming there's gonna be a sequel. Well, if there is a sequel. I mean, I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't put it past Sony because they're, at this point they're basically sticking their fingers in there going, la, 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 la I'm not la, listening, la, 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 la. And so, um, well, uh, okay, so the symbiote then uh, fucking pings Brock off into the uh, Bay Harbor area and starts talking with him properly. He says his name is Venom and says, okay, let's form an alliance so that uh, we can sort all the shit out. And so Brock says, okay, but we've got to turn over all the evidence from the phone I took, for the phone photos I took of the Life Foundation and put it into my old place of work. Sure, why not? And um, he is, he's confronted by one of those, uh, one of the characters from uh, Sons of Anarchy. Basically says, no, okay. no, you can't, <laughs> you can't go in there. You can't go in there. Sorry, mate. I know you used to work there. I know we're friends and everything, but uh, sorry, you can't go in. And I thought at this point, okay, here's what he's going to do. Venom's going to say, oh, we're wasting so much time. Transform into Venom and jump over the guy and run up. But no, he runs up the side of the building. And uh, okay, fine. But it is actually leads to a very interesting moment. He, the Venom looks out across the uh, San Francisco and says, you know what? Your world is actually kind of beautiful. And it, it, I, I thought it was a, a, a kind of nice little moment. Yes, because what he's doing is a lab. But basically, and rab, and, and a lab rabbits. and space. Rab, lab, space, you know, okay, you know, space is very pretty but as well. but Yeah, and um, and it, it, it marks the beginning of them connecting a bit more. And so they, they leave him. They leave. Uh, uh, and this is the interesting thing, though, because Eddie Brock has a fear of heights in this oh, yeah. movie, which they did Jump establish. Out the Jump out the window. <laughs> and then you <laughs> they, cu- cut. they cut to them in front of an elevator. Pussy. <laughs> and this, it's. I never expected a lot of laughs in this movie. That was one of the best laughs I got. That was that was genuinely funny. The whole, the whole audience, the whole audience I was with yesterday burst out laughing. <laughs> yeah, it was a great tension moment, and it really it does establish this sort of buddy cop sort of dynamic between Venom and Eddie. It's actually really compelling. Aye, yes, it is. 
And uh, but then you go get to the lobby of the uh, the place and find uh oh there's a ton of swap people there and so they just beat the crap out of them bloodlessly. In a terribly shot and lit battle sequence. Yeah, and uh, but then uh, Michelle Williams, I can't remember her character's name. Anne. Uh, and uh, Anne or Annie or something like that. She's she, she's a character from the comics too. Uh, I'm just gonna call Michelle Williams. Why not? And... Okay, Glinda shows up. <laughs> Oh, it was because she, she was in that Sam Raimi. Uh... Yeah. Oh, okay. So I remember her mainly from uh, The Greatest Showman, but sure, yeah. The bubbles are not, ju- the bubbles are not are just for show. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> and she kicks the Wicked Witch of the East out of the built right out of the castle. <laughs> with, a wall, with a bubble. <laughs> what a weird connection to the original Sam Raimi Vellum. Anyway. And, <laughs> and, um... And so she basically confronts him and he transforms back into Ed. And she's like, oh shit, you've been possessed by an alien. And he's like, yeah. It's like, okay, we need to go to the hospital right now. And he's like, okay. And they have a nice little back and forth in the uh, car. He's clearly not doing well. And Venom is, I was worried that Venom's going to be like, eat her. But he's like, I like her. I like her. And it's, again, it's just like, Clearly, there were some people working on this that really didn't know what they were doing. This is the good bits I'm talking about. There's, there's little bits in this little dynamic. Yeah, it's a bit lighter and hearted, a bit more funny. But they could have so easily made this very uninteresting and very boring, very dull and very dour. And it's not. There are bits that just sparkle, I guess. Yeah, yeah Venom's like, uh, you should apologize to her now before it's too late. Yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 Venom. Yeah, I'm sure you really know a lot. Are you releasing a self-help book, Venom? Is that, is that it? <laughs> Coming soon, the self-help symbiote guide. Check out my sequel novel, Sex and Symbiosis, spicing <laughs> up the bedroom with goo. <laughs> Fifty shades of goo. <laughs> Fifty shades of Venom, oh God. And, uh, yeah. Maximum Ugh. carnage. No, 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 no. And um, basically, it's revealed then in the hospital, he can't really go into the MRI machine because it produces a sonic thing at a certain hertz level, so can gigahertz, megahertz level, that hurts the symbiote. And um, it's basically revealed that Eddie's organs are rotting from the inside because of the symbiote. And then he immediately tries to get it off him. And just like, hey, you lied to me. And the Venom thing is like, no, oh, wait, I can explain. I was, and uh, he never really does explain. He How nev- can I live without you? And it, this really does bring a big, like, overhanging question mark over the movie. Like, is the symbiote actually killing Eddie or not? And it, it's this thing that I really think they should have just gotten rid of the movie. If you're going to have a perfect symbiosis character like Eddie... Have a perfect symbiosis thing. Have there be no negative repercussions. Because wouldn't that be more thematic? Because I remember the bit from uh, Spider-Man 3. At least the trailer I can remember. Like the power. It feels good. You can lose yourself to it. Mm. Like it's supposed to make Eddie feel good. Feel strong. Feel powerful. Almost addictive in a way. But the symbiote wants to hurt people. And is willing to kill people. And so it's like. It's an interesting dynamic sort of thing. But no, now he has literally no reason to bond with a symbiote because, yeah, he gets superpowers, but also it will kill him. It will... Yeah, but he didn't really show any signs of addiction or interest in using the power anyway, apart from to drop the, his phone off, and that was about it. Basically, yeah. Which kind of... Because I think... I like Tom Hardy's performance in this, but I think Eddie's too much of a nice guy in this, in this version. There's no vices really that venom can feed off upon Cause, and because uh, in the current... comic eddie was not he wasn't a bad guy per se but he was an angry guy and a kind of disturbed guy he never really hurt anyone but you just know if he experienced any more trauma in his life he could have hurt someone well, well, so when he they... did experience trauma and he got born with an alien symbiote he hurt people exactly I... so they need to, they should have for, I don't know if they, how many times they rewrote the stupid script. They should have rewrote it again. Yeah, but how many people worked on the script for this? Oh, let's see now. Uh, Jeff ne- Jeff Pinkner, who I believe also wrote Amazing Spider-Man 2. Oh, uh, S- Scott Rosenberg and someone called Kelly Marcel. 
Marcel. Okay. Ah, uh, so something else. Cause I, oh. rem I remember seeing something recently where like six people worked on the script. So I was just like, shit. But oh, that... uh, Kelly, Mar Kelly Marcel wrote Fifty Shades of Grey. Really? Yes. And what does Scott Rosenberg write? He has written. Okay, he wrote Con Air, which is good. He uh, he wrote. Okay, apparently he he was he revised scripts for the original Spider Man movie. Uh, Jumanji, Cloverfield. Uh, oh God, he did, oh oh he wrote Kangaroo Jack. Of course he did. Oh, clearly, Sony is picking the best talent. Uh. And Jeff P and Jeff Pickner. I mean, I don't really I don't necessarily much. blame Kelly Marcel because she had to adapt a book that was shit from the get go. So she was like sh like r running a marathon with one foot being shot off. But uh, <laughs> oh, Jeff Pickner wrote a lot of Fringe. Which also happened to be co co created by Alex Kurtzman, Robert Orsi. Of course it was. Oh, God. They've done like one good thing. One good thing, I swear. Mm -hmm. Oh, he also wrote the Dark Tower movie. Shit. Here's an idea, studio executives. Why don't you hire people whose Rotten Tomato scores are slightly higher than 16 sodding percent? Oh, I didn't know people were ranked on there as well. No, no, not people, but like the movies they make. The oh, okay, right. Like if you if you write a movie and that movie gets panned for its story, maybe you shouldn't hire that person for a movie that's supposed to kickstart your own cinematic franchise. Just a thought. Mm. Oh, the, the the director I'm looking at seeing right now, um, Ruben Fleischer. Apparently, he was a director of t TV commercials and music videos before he went on to film. Oh, because that works so well for people like Michael Bay and MCG and all those shitheads. Although he did direct Zombieland, which isn't bad. Okay, fair enough. That explains and... why Wardle Harrison is in this. Yeah. Oh, and uh, something called Gangster Squad, which I've never watched. I either. have watched and it's meh. Okay. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, uh, that's another person from The Amazing Spider-Man who was in this. Another connection to <laughs> Spider-Man that was shit. <laughs> oh dear. What a web. What a tangled web we weave. And so so he gets rid of the uh, Venom symbiote, but then is immediately captured by uh, the Life Foundation uh, thugs, basically. And meanwhile, the symbiote escapes into an air vent, okay, and then attaches itself to, like, a little tiny chihuahua dog and then confronts Michelle Williams. So meanwhile... Yes. Yeah, see, see, there's another connection to the mask. It possesses a dog. Oh my god! It's like, oh, is it going to turn into a into a venom dog? That'd be kick ass. And we get an alternative, even more evil version of the same thing in the bad guy. Weird. There are so many weird connections to one of my favorite movies of all time. How bizarre! Cinema musicals, sadly, unless you count the rap. Smoking. I don't know. <laughs> Smoking. Ooh, somebody's stomach. I must learn how you do that voice, and I will steal it for myself. Just watch, Do just li just listen to um, Frank Welker do Doctor Claw, and then try to impersonate that. So I did it. Next time, gadget. Next I'll, time. I'll get you next time, gadget. Next time. <laughs> Dear God. And so, uh, meanwhile, uh, Drake, uh, Carlton Drake, bonds with uh, the other symbiote, Riot, that was hitchhiking across Malaysia and then the United States. And um, basically, and so the symbiote's plan, or I think all of the symbiote's plan actually in this movie, plan was to uh, bring symbiotes back to Earth to basically take over the human race, even though, again, or they're symbiotes, so they wouldn't really take over. I think it was to eat them, actually. So this movie is so confusing. I don't, I don't, I just, I, I don't understand anything. And what do you want? What do you want with me? And, but apparently Carlton Drake, apparently now that he's bonded with Riot, goes along with it now. Okay. He's going to jump in the rocket to go get the other symbiotes. I was like a genius that he is. He kills everyone in mission control. <laughs> so who's monitoring the rocket? <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, uh, the movie starts to devolve at this point. And um, Eddie manages to... It's about to be shot in the head in the woods by uh, the security people, but uh, they're stopped by Michelle Williams' venom, 
who she venom she venom sure why not and no, uh, no, that's the, that's the character's name in the comics really oh okay yes yeah, it's, it's she venom okay right well, right then she hulk should sue <laughs> she hulk su- should sue oh my god i created a tongue twister considering the thought that she's a lawyer i mean she could do that uh, but anyway, and... Um... Oh, my God. Sue's, Sue's, Sue's Michelle Williams' character. Oh, my God! <laughs> it's She-Hulk. It's She-Venom. What the fuck is this? Six degrees of whatever the fuck we can think of. <laughs> and um, then she takes out all the guns. It looks really cool doing it. And then she kisses Eddie and the symbiote transfers from her to him. And it's just... and. That's weird. It's, it's weird, but cool. Like, it fits. It's one of those things that fits. There are plenty of things in this movie that don't fit. This fits. In a weird sort of way. Weird. And um, and then the, sim- the, then the symbiote and Eddie agree to stop the launch. And the symbiote says, uh, okay, so I know we had this whole plan to just stop people, stop, you know, bring all the people here, all the symbiotes. But uh, I've changed my mind because being with you and her and seeing your world, I've decided that I want to help the human race now. And I'm just sitting there thinking, well, I mean, okay, great, but what exactly brought it on? And Eddie asks, what brought that on? And he's just like, <sighs> you did. Okay, yeah, sure, but what did he do? Was it the but- love he feels for Michelle Williams? Was it his dedication for the truth, protecting people? Uh, what exactly, the, just the pretty San Francisco skyline? What exactly made you decide to betray your entire species? You're turning to the light side quicker than Anakin Skywalker turned to the dark side. Well, well, doesn't Venom then reveal why he's doing it? Well, why? Well, what does he say? But doesn't he say that he's on his planet? He's a loser. That's not why is okay. Why is he a loser? Well, what did he do on his own planet that made him a loser? You know, he got taken by the Life Foundation people in space. Does that mean must be something important? Why? Why? Why are you? Oh my God! This so is. They say that they say they got the symbiotes from a comet. So what the hell were they doing? Where is the comet the planet to what? I I, think, I, don't, I don't know what. They, I don't think it is the planet. But what exact were they trying to get to Earth? Were they traveling to Earth? Uh, maybe they were being exiled from their planet for various reasons. I don't. There's so many things that could have easily been answered, and that's the thing we really don't know much. As much as we know about Eddie, we don't know much about the venom symbiote thing and this would have been a perfect opportunity to find out more about it we get its character a lot we know it's kind of well likes to eat heads for starters (laughs) (laughs) and alternates quickly swiftly between homicidal and you know the love guru it's uh it's uh and there's this like i said this is where the movie starts to devolve we get a shitty battle between venom and riot uh, in the dark, with CGI flying all over the place. I can't tell what's going on because the camera's flying around all over the place. Camera's flying all over the place, and it's, the, it's Riot stabs Eddie with a big like shard of its thing because it can create like solid weapons with its body. And in fairness, they do say that Riot is like an ultimate badass and much much more powerful than Venom. Fair enough, okay, and. Uh, but then they, they, Venom bonds with Eddie again and they take, because they got separated briefly, they get separated a lot in this movie, and he takes the shard out and uses it to blow up the uh, well, thing. And the then rocket. the rocket that uh, Carlton oh. Drake are in. And it's like, I keep on imagining like, the bit with Carlton Drake realised, oh my God, you're trying to betray me and take over the world. I don't want that. But no, that never happens. And he dies yeah, like a bitch. Because yeah, what I know is that Riot stabs Eddie. Then he just jumps in the rocket where it's, about 10 seconds from taking off. It's like, that's not how it works. Yeah. It's got to be space train. It takes like probably like five hours to get ready to jump into a rocket. This movie isn't operating on logic anymore. <laughs> they're, they're, this is a sprint to the finish line at this point. Yeah, it's like, oh, wait, we're, we're running out of time. Quick, do, throw random things at each. Throw, like, it's like watching two melted Play-Dohs get thrown at each other. Uh, it's like weird alternate versions of Morph and his, I don't know, his cousin? <laughs> what was the name of the other, per- other Morph character? Um... I can't remember, damn it. The white one. Uh, morph cousin. Um, oh dear, I can't find it. Uh, okay, morph animation. Let's just look. Morph is cousin is called because I can't find it. Was it even his cousin? I think it was his cousin or his brother or something like that. Uh, his cousin is Chaz. Chaz? They're, they're not related. They're friends, not cousins. Oh, Chaz. So, well, the resemblance was uncanny. 
in yes. fairness. But uh, okay, yeah, sure. So there's Morph and Chaz. And that's the thing, Riot doesn't even look that distinct from Venom. Venom is black and Riot is slightly grey. Sil- he's a silver version of Carnage. Why not just make him white then? Like make him like the anti Venom or something. Or luminous yellow. I don't know. Let's make him stand out a bit. This movie's dark think, enough as it is. I think Riot um, is uh, white in the comics. Uh, so, so apparently uh, Riot is grey then. Okay. And yeah. and then the explosion happens, killing uh, Riot and uh, Carlton Drake. And then Venom says, goodbye, Eddie. And Eddie goodbye, plunges, Eddie. And plunges into the water. And I thought, like, oh, so Venom is dead then. But then later, after having a bit of a conversation with Michelle Williams, where they don't get back together, I thought that was reasonable, um, it reveals that Eddie and Venom are, in fact, still bonded. And just like... Did we miss a scene? I thought he died in the explosion. How did that happen? But again, sprint to the finish line. So Eddie gives him a talk about not eating bad people. Uh, Sorry, not eating good people, only eating bad people. And then uh, they find they go back to Mrs. Chen's uh, shop and find uh, she's been robbed again. And so then we get the uh, the turd scene. (laughs) That was in all the trailers. And it's right at the end of the movie, which means... When we think that Eddie and Venom are separated, but we don't haven't seen that scene yet, we know that it's coming up. We know how the movie ends. This movie essentially gave away the ending for its movie in the trailers. This is so fucking stupid. Well, Dark Phoenix has done the same thing. Oh, uh, well, that's been pushed back, so you know we'll probably forget about it. By so that we time. can get, so we can get a two, so we can get a, a was it a, a fifty twelve rated Deadpool movie, Deadpool two version, really? Ah, uh, the levels hey. of bullshit nowadays. Really, is too Fox, much. you have pushed your entire film schedule back just so you can do a a family friendly censored version of Deadpool two for Christmas against Mary Poppins, Aquaman, and Bumblebee. Really, good luck with that. Oh, and Harry Potter too, so good luck with that. Someone save these people from themselves. <laughs> oh dear. But we have a few extra credit scenes. We uh, we see Eddie Brock going to uh, a prison, I was, I was, and immediately we're thinking, oh, well, he's going to visit Cletus Cassidy. He yep. walks down the, uh, the, the corridor towards a cell. He's going to visit Cletus, Cass- Cletus Cassidy. And then we see, we meet Cletus Cassidy, and... The way they portrayed... I thought he was going to do the interview, leave, and a bit of Venom would be left behind. And like a tease for the next thing. But no, it's just Eddie Brock meeting Cletus Cassidy. And Cletus Cassidy is like, if I ever get out of here, there's going to be carnage. And wink. Wink. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. There's winking in a way that people will understand and where people won't. Because I know who carnage is. You know who Carnage is, but there are, might be some people out there that aren't familiar with Carnage or Cletus Cassidy. So as far as they know, they've just got this random scene with this random red-headed guy played by Woody Harrelson. In a, Ronald, in a wig he probably stole from Ronald McDonald. The wig looks stupid. <laughs> it's awful. Really stupid. Really <laughs> fucking stupid. And, um... Yeah, maybe maybe uh, Woody Harrelson would be great as Cletus Cassidy. I'm sure he'll have a lot of fun in the role. But um, if we get a sequel, it's it's one of those things where I, you could see it coming, and yet it's still disappointed. It's it's amazing how it just fundamentally doesn't work. But then, as we go through the rest of the credits, you see featuring music from Eminem, Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Wait a minute, there was music from Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse? When did that happen? Wait, is the post credit scene going to be... And then it's a big long clip from Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Oh, well, I left beforehand then because I knew it was coming. I don't want to spoil it for myself. I didn't know it was coming. And, um... Yeah, it really doesn't tie into fucking anything. It's just, again, Sony just trying to push... Hey, remember we're doing other Spider-Man things? Miles around us, yay! And... I'll be honest. I'm looking forward to Spider-Man and Spider-Verse. I think it might be quite good. The animation on it, though, is so fucking janky. It's like they missed out several frames of animation. Is it just me? Is it just me? Or do I think this... I feel sick when I'm watching it. It's not smooth or flowing in any way. It's 
ridiculously jarring and janky. It's awful. Yeah, well, I have been looking a bit. It's been looking a bit weird at the trailer, trailer, isn't it? Because the main, because it's very stop motiony. I think, in my opinion, but not even stop motion has smoother movements than this. Fucking Coraline is way more flowing than this. It's, it's especially because like, there's so, so many fast edits and so many uh, random camera angles and such fast movements between the characters. It's Spider Man. It's Spider Man. You need to be able to actually see what's going on, and this. It's. Oh, I wonder, if, wonder if it's intentional because all the different spider characters appear to have their own animation style. I don't know, maybe, but if so, why would you make your animation intentionally bad? Like, the art design is fine. The way the characters look and the backgrounds look, that's fine. It's just the way things move that's awful. The way it's animated as opposed to the way it's sort of drawn or CGI'd or whatever. So, yeah. And so that's how this movie ends. It ends with a fucking clip from Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. And just this whole thing like, meanwhile, another universe. And if you had no idea what Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse was and, and and didn't really care, this would just come right the fuck out of nowhere and make absolutely zero sense. Who is this person? Why is he wearing a weird Spider-Man costume? Why is this other guy wearing a Spider-Man costume? Why are they running from the police? What's going on here? Why is it animated? And this just... Oh my god, this whole movie and everything Sony is doing right now is just throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. Why? Why can't you just be fucking consistent and think about what you're fucking doing? Oh dear. And that's, that, that's Venom. That is Venom. Uh, it's a fucking mess. Like a turd in the wind. Like a turn in the wind? What does that even mean, a turn in the wind? That's not a... There's, like... Oh my god, and you know, they couldn't say shit. They just had to say turd. Ooh, so friendly. Oh, you call me a turd. Oh god, it's like I'm back in school. And they throw the F word in the ones just to be edgy. Oh yeah, because they can get away with one F word. And if you can get away with one F word, then don't even bother using one F word. Because then it's just like, F words are not a quota. I don't have a quota on F words. I'll say fuck as many times as I fucking fucking wish. But, you know, I'm not going to do it just because I can get away with it. I'm doing it because I fucking want to. You fucking piece of shit. Okay, that one maybe disproved my point slightly, but you see my point. What's your language, bud? We're on the air. Uh, and... I mean, so, good things about this movie. Tom Hardy. The duality between Eddie and the symbiote. Certain action scenes. The humour in certain places. Michelle Williams is always good. Michelle Williams is good. Um, uh, 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 Jenny Slate can act pretty well. Well, no, Jenny Slate's good in this, I guess. She's not, it's not very, like, in, not very interesting character. Uh, I thought the CGI on the symbiotes when they're alone and squidging around was all right. Yeah, obviously looked better than when he actually turned to Venom. <laughs> and um, that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, this is, again, this is not fan stick. There is good stuff here. But um, it really, really, really is fucking disappointing. And uh, I we really, really, really disappointing. I, I, do you know what this movie is? Just, do you know what this movie is? It's perfectly encapsulated in the Stan Lee cameo. Because uh, that... He, he, Venom and Eddie walk away from Michelle Williams after really being totally broken up at the end of the movie. And Stanley just randomly walks and says, Hey, you two should uh, stick together. I've got a good feeling about you two. And the Venom symbiote in his head says, Wait, who was that guy? <laughs> I like his talk. And it's like, on the one hand, you've got Stanley coming the fuck out of nowhere and giving his opinion to some random guy as far as we know. It makes no sense. But then it's followed up by a really funny line and a really self referential tongue-in-cheek line. And it's like, I, I, I hate this movie, you know? I hate this movie because it sh keeps on just waggling its potential in my face. Like, ooh, look at what we could be. Ooh, look at all this fun stuff that we have in here. But it's not going to be like a lot of fun stuff. It's going to be a little bit of fun stuff. Like, I could deal with this movie a lot more if it was just shit from beginning to end. If it was Suicide Squad, I wouldn't care as much. But it's not Suicide Squad, it's Venom. Something good hidden amongst loads of crap. And 
I'm, I'm, I'm just tired. I'm tired because I wanted this to be good. I wanted to enjoy this because I like the Venom character. And here's the thing with reboots. My, I'm fine with reboots. A lot of people out there say, oh, reboots, another reboot. I'm like, I'm fine with reboots as long as you are taking a character or a story or a project or a world that has been done before. Maybe he hasn't lived up to his full potential, and this is the time where you get it right. Reimaginings, that's a separate thing. Re 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 remakes, that's a separate thing. But reboots are supposed to, you're supposed, this is the chance where you get things fucking right. The definitive version. Don't put your own spit on it. You could put everything into it. You, that, that's what they're supposed to do. And if you're going to reboot the character of Venom, you better damn well get it right. Because now we're back where we were. Fucking amazing Spider-Man. That's where we are. A disappointing crap with maybe one or two good elements to it. And then disappointing and Sony just pushing these characters on us when they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. I'm surprised Avi Arad is still making movies, to be perfectly honest. Oh dear. We don't care about making this movie. It wasn't to make a good story or to bring a pop the character to the big screen. Okay, I suppose it was to bring a pop the character to the big screen, but it was just to make money. Yeah, it was it just was made... to make, make money and hold on to the rights and the franchise. And it was they made could... with... Exactly. It was made with less passion, passion than the pigeons next door have on the roof. Yeah, <laughs> and it's... So I, mean, I mean, every movie is made to make money. The MCU yeah. are no different. But they do care about the characters. They are willing to put the characters in the hands of people who know what they're doing and are skilled. And uh, uh, it's... Uh, and Sony has no love or desire to tell an engaging story about Spider-Man's universe. They haven't done it since Spider-Man 2. They just wish to make money in the most cynical, cash-grabbing, uncreative... Uh, the production line quality mechanical thing they can throw together. And even that would be tolerable if at the very least, the very least, they made something good. You don't need to love a character or love a franchise in order to make a good movie out of it. Uh, and sometimes that can even lead to uh, worse scenarios. But if you're going to do it, you, re you should at least know what you're doing. And it clearly, clearly, the people making this movie didn't know what they're doing except for Tom Hardy. Or they just don't care. Yeah, or they just don't care. Well, I think Tom Hardy but, probably get a bit. But Tom Hardy, apart from Tom Hardy and maybe the director, they they did. The people behind Sony don't care. They don't give a toss about what they're doing with Spider Man. All they want to do is make money. This is the reason why they cancelled Spider Man Four and fired Raimi and rebooted the series and then killed that series and then remade it again. Yeah, that's it. and they had to hand it over to Marvel not because they wanted to, but because you know it was the only way they could stay afloat. And um. And now the, and this is the big thing. This is the thing that really gets me. These characters are not making because of a director or a studio hanging on because they merely want to make movies. It's just because of rights. The reason we got this movie is because of shitty legal issues. That's it. That's it. And I know that you need legal issues and legal precedents when you're making movies and stuff like that, and intellectual property rights and character rights and stuff like that. But. At the very least, you should be able to make good movies out of that. And you're not. You're not. And I think if you... You know, if your Rotten Tomatoes score is less than 40% of your movie, you should lose the rights. Mm, that's true. I and agree this, with that. This is, this is at 31%. So... Back to the drawing board. Back to the drawing board. And yeah, you know what? Maybe they can make a sequel. And maybe it would be better. But considering that this is the third Spider-Man related movie Sony have made on their own... That uh, is shit. I'm not going to fucking hold my breath. Nope, neither am I. Because either it's going to go two ways. It's going to do well at the box office so that that will for some reason convince them that they, they they should make a sequel. Or it'll bomb again. They'll scrap, they'll announce they scrap all their plans and they're going to do something again. Or maybe the Spider-Man animated film will be successful and say, you know what, let's make some animated Spider-Man movies. Well, apparently, that might work. apparently Tom Hardy has signed on for two, for two more Venom films. So Oh, joy. Yeah, he's only done one Man Max film, but he's going to do three Venom movies. Great choice, Tom. Great choice. Great. Well done, Tom. Well done. Uh, and uh, this is where he is. Much like the Venom character itself, we are in a dark, scary place with little hope. And uh, the future looks bleak. But uh, you know what? We've got the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so... 
I'm, and, I'm, I'm not happy with Sony. I'm not happy with all the characters they meant to hold on. But the important thing is the characters we genuinely care about. Like, I can live with a bad Venom movie. I really can't. I don't want to, but I can live with a bad Venom movie as long as we're getting good Spider-Man movies. And we are getting them right now, thankfully. So... It's this is a thorn in our side. It's a thorn aside. Maybe one day we'll pluck the thorn out and discard it and forget all about it, or maybe it'll be there forever. But it will never cause us truly that much damage. Sony will always be playing catch up to Marvel, and it's pathetic. But you know what? That's honestly they'll suffer more for it than we ever will. Mm -hmm. And I think on that note, it's time to end the show. Thank you very much, Mark, for joining <clears throat> me today. You're welcome. You know, it occurred to me that. Wolfram and Hart was filmed at Sony's HQ in Angel. That's saying something. Oh my god, Sony, everything evil makes... Lawyers. Evil lawyers. Evil lawyers, this makes so much sense. <laughs> ah! Ah! And if you enjoy the show, Capers, please tell your friends, shout out from the rooftops! And if you haven't already, go back and listen to some of our other super episodes. Like, for example, when we talked a lot about the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe Netflix shows. Check those out. And you can listen to the show on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube, Spotify, or at podcapers.com. We have a Patreon. Check out the rewards. Patreon.com forward slash AP2HYC. If you want to get in touch with us, suggest show topics, or maybe come on the show yourself, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at AP2HYC, or email us at podcapers at AP2HYC.com. Thank you very much to Dan Harris for our logo, the lovely microphone, the red and blue 3D glasses. Those are mine. And thank you for listening. This has been Podcapers, the official podcast for a place to hang your cape. Cue the music. Ah! How did you get back in here? Don't eat me! <laughs>